Hey guys, it's Ben and welcome back to episode 2 of your bucket minigame tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at something called, what I like to call game state. Um, and it tells you what state the game is in. And as well as that, we're going to be looking at actually telling this, uh, the minigame if we are able to start the game or not, which is what we looked at last tutorial. So, let's start off and we're going to make a new class and it's going to be in our com.thebcbros.bucket package. And we're just going to call this game state. It's going to be a fairly small class, and what this class is going to actually contain is it's going to contain the types of state that the game can be in, and it's going to set the state of the game so that if we ever need to check the state of the game uh, through the server, we can just we can get a grab a method from this class and check the state. So, a few things we want to do is we want to change this from being a class to being an enumerator, and what an enumerator is is it holds values. And then through these values, it basically creates what is a type of class for each of the values that we define. So, for example, if I were to type um, for my first game state in underscore lobby, like so, it has now created this uh, parameter or uh, what's the word variable, or I guess it's what you call it. And I could then go into another class and I could type uh, game state dot in lobby and you know this doesn't actually contain anything uh, but we, we can it's it's useful for checking things and we'll see how this works in a moment so we're going to create all our states so we have in lobby and then just make place a comma and then in underscore game and then another comma and then post underscore game and resetting so these are all of our states um, and we want to actually give each of these states a variable to go with them and that variable is going to be whether the player can join the server whilst the game is in these states. And then while we're there, and what we're, how we're going to do this is we are going to make a method for this class, which is going to be well not even public. It's going to be game state. So we we have we define the name of the class as a method, and in here we take boolean can join, like so. Now you see all of these gone red, and that's because they're not. They currently don't have. There's no constructor which doesn't have. Like if we didn't have this constructor, then it would assume that the default constructor just has nothing in it, like, like so. But because we have now placed something in the constructor and we've defined it like this, each of these must contain the boolean can join. So when the game is in lobby, it's true the player can join. If the player, if the game is in game, they can't join. If it's in post game, they can't join. And if the game is resetting, they can't join. So now we want to make a variable in this class, and it's going to be a private boolean can join. And when this is defined, when this is one of one of these is called, we want to set the boolean can join. So this dot can join equal to can join, like so. So if we said in lobby dot get or can join, it would return true. So for this, we want to make a method. So public boolean can join, and we're going to return can join. Like so. Okay, sorry about that. I am I am now back. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. So anyway, now we have this can join sort of method. So we can check when they can join. And we also want to make something different. We want to make it a private the voice crack. Private static game state state. And this is going to be the current state. So I should I call this current. Current state is what I should really call it. Um so in where we actually underneath all of these sort of like local methods we're going to make a couple of static methods so we're going to make a public static void and we're going to set the state so it's going to be our set state and it's going to take a game state state and then in here we can type game state dot state or current state i guess i called it equals state like so and then we're also going to make one which is going to be a public static boolean is state uh, game state state. So this is going to check to see if the game state is a state. And it's going to return game state dot current state is equal to state with a double equal signs. So what this means we can do is we can now externally set the current game state and then, you know, uh, check if the game state is a state. And finally, we want to make a public game or public static static game state state or game state get state 
and we're going to type, and this is going to return the current state. So, in our main class, we want to make it so when the server first enables, we say game state dot set state game state dot in lobby like so. So that's going to set our game state to be in lobby. So now, in our start countdown method, we want to check if the game state isn't a part of this whole thing. <laughs> it, so if we're basically not in game, if the, if the if the game is in lobby. So underneath our whilst true, we want to say, um, hmm. yes, we want to say if the game state dot is state game state dot in lobby so if the game state is the lobby state and we also want to check if the game can start so we're, all, we're just going to type this out now so if game dot can start we're going to just put brackets around all of this here like so so now and it's not in game it's the bc bc warfare dot can start so <clears throat> We want to make this method now. So create method can start. So that's going to appear in our main Java plugin class. So when this gets run, it's going to just start. So if the game state is in lobby, and if the game can start, then we're going to, uh, you know, loop through all of this, and it's going to start counting down. Otherwise, if it can't start, it's going to sleep for a second, and then it's going to start this again, so check if it's in lobby, check if it can start, and if it can't start, it's going to start through this, like so. So we actually want to broadcast a message saying, you know, the timer is starting, so chat color dot, not chat color, <laughs> chat utilities dot broadcast, uh, and we'll say something like minimum players, players reached, and then game, or countdown, countdown, starting like so and but also what we want to do is we want to check when the uh, the game every time this loops through here we want to also check if the game can start so every second it's still going to check if the game can start so if the game uh, which we haven't actually made so the BC warfare dot can start and we're going to put an exclamation mark so if the game cannot start then what we're going to say is we're going to say chat utilities uh, dot broadcast message or broadcast and then we're going to say not enough players needed to start countdown countdown stopped or something along those lines and then just return or not return because that would then just break break out of this loop here so it takes us back into our whilst troop so it's checking again are there enough players no let's wait a second are there enough players and it continues like that so in here, that is how that works. And we are pretty much done with this class now. So I'm just going to close that. So in our can start method, we're going to make a listener. And this is going to be our player join listener. So if we go into our listener uh, package and select create new class. And in this uh, name field, we're just going to type player join. So it's going to be our player join listener. And in our listeners, we're going to make another package, actually, listeners.player. And then we're going to move our player join one into the player listener. So this is a, a listener for players. And we're also going to make another class. And this is going to be like our, our main uh, listener class. And we're just going to put this under com.thebc, <laughs> com listeners. So it's not in player. And we're going to call this um, just like mg listener. So mini game listener, and in here, this is going to be like a super class. Uh, and in here, all that we're really going to put is we're just going to make sure that every one we have, every uh, one that we have, will implement listener, and it will have access to our main plugin. So make this class implement listener, listener like so, and we want to make a mini game. Well, not mini game. I'm used to making other plugins, I just call it mini game. The BC Warfare, and we're going to call this plugin, and then we're going to make a constructor, so public minigame listener, the BC Warfare PL, and then plugin equals PL. 
So that's all we're doing, and we can close that, we can immediately close that, and never really go back to it again. And now we're going to make our player join class extends mg listener, like so. And now you'll notice that it actually wants us to implement our constructor. So we're going to do that, and it's going to say super pl. And all this means is that when we define it in our main class, it's going to take a instance of the main class. And all that's saying is now in our methods we could type plugin plugin dot something and it will give us an instance of our plugin. So that's how that works. Um, so we're gonna make an at event handler public void on player join player join event e. So like you ever make like you always make a um, an event normally like so except we're just gonna separate them all into a separate classes. So we're also gonna make a method in our main class which is to uh, initiate all of these and this is going to be public void register listeners like so let's check how long we're gonna have for okay it's fine and in this register listeners we're gonna get the plugin manager pm equals get server but get plugin manager like so and then import that from all the bucket of plugin manager and type pm dot register events in our new player join class player join with this plugin as the plugin and as the parameter for thing. So, like so, we're going to take in here the player join event to make it a player join event. And we're going to say, we're going to set the game, set if the game can start. So in our, in our can start, we actually might want to move this. Yeah, we are, we're gonna move this. So we're gonna make a new class in our handlers package called just game and in here this is going to handle all of our game kind of how the game works and how the game runs and our game data so we're going to move this into here so just copy and paste that into there and obviously in our um, start countdown that's going to throw us errors so instead of BC warfare just type game and game and then import them with control shift O so they imported and in here we also want to make a method which is going to be public static void set can start, which is going to take a boolean b, and we're going to make a a uh, a boolean up here. So private static boolean can start can start equals false. So start, you know, it can't start. And then we're going to say can start equals b, like so. And then can start will return can start like so so that is our can start stuff done we just have to actually use it now so in our player join method when the player joins we're going to say game dot set can start and we're going to set it say if there's um you know eight eight people eight people are gonna be the minimum amount of people so we say bucket but get online players dot length so the amount of players if the players online is greater than or equal to eight and not with the space so set can start bucket or get online players is greater than or equal to eight this obviously returns a boolean um, so if that is true it returns true if it's false it returns false so that is basically how that works and we also want to make a listener for when the uh, the player leaves so in our player listeners we want to make a player quit, what's it's called, player quit, and I need to turn off that construct generation, and this also is going to extend minigame, minigame listener. So, in here, we basically do the exact same thing. So we say, I'm at event handler, public void on player quit, player quit event, event. Um, first of all, we're gonna check if the game state is in lobby, so if, game state game state dot is state game state dot lobby in lobby in lobby then we want to say game dot set can start and I'm actually just gonna copy this over from here like so so game dot can start equal bucket of players dot length minus one because remember this player hasn't actually disconnected yet this is as they're disconnecting and we're going to say if that's greater than or equal to 8. And if it's not, then we're gonna, it's going to set to false and the uh, game won't start. So that is how we do all of that.
I'm just gonna scroll through these classes just so we get to see what we've changed and cool I will see you guys in the next tutorial